Today on this last episode of this year on Chimstock Africa, we talk the f- continual killing in northern Nigeria with Dr. Shayo Ajiboye. And then I have special music with Word to the People from Joburg. This is Chimstock Africa. From Cape Town to Cairo and from Magadishu to Dakar, this is Chim's Talk Africa. And now here's your host, Chim Onyibilanma. Welcome there, viewers, to this special edition of your show, Change Talk Africa. I'm so glad that you can join us. And you know what? I'm so privileged to have with me in this end-of-the-year edition three of my children. Hi, my name is Simi. Thank you for joining us. My name is Ada, compliments of the season. Hi, my name is Hudson, and I'm so happy to be here. We have quite a show for you today. We have music and we have some very, very interesting topics that we'll be discussing. Our first guest today is Dr. Shayo Ajiboye, and he's the president of the Redeemed Christian Church of God's North American Theological School, which is located in Greenville, Texas, USA. Yes, you, you see, I, I will be chatting with Dr. Shayo about the continual killings in Northern Nigeria. Some of you may have heard about the Fulani headsman killing that has just escalated in the recent past and uh, has got a lot of people worried and asking what is truly going on in northern Nigeria. Dr. Shire, though he lives in North America, is very, very in involved in what is going on in northern Nigeria with ministries that he's doing their presence among those people who are affected by this killing. So hence this discussion with him about what is going on in northern Nigeria. Now let's take a look at the interview. Welcome, Dr. Shire, to this interview. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you to you especially because I know you're busy out there in Texas. It seems to be a sunny, windy day there. Uh, let me go straight to the reason why I have you here. Dr. Shire, you've been involved in ministry in northern Nigeria, and uh, even though you live in Texas, tell me, what do you believe, or your opinion, what is the reason for the killings in northern Nigeria? Oh, the killing in northern Nigeria is multifaceted. There are many, many layers that uh, is at work together, but at the, at, the, at, the, at the root of all the layers, and what is driving it is an hegemonistic proposition of a group of people that believe it is their mandate to rule the nation. And there is also, uh, people don't like to discuss this, they don't like to bring it into the public square, but the truth is that there is an Islamic um, jihadist agenda that is driving these activities. Listen, Dr. Shayo, I, I hear you, but uh, my, my question is this. In the face of these killings, in reading through your speakings, reading through your writings and many of your speakings, you continually emphasize the need for the church to come to the place of weeping. Uh, you talk about the, the need to weep in the face of these killings. Tell me, what is the reason for this, your call for the church to weep, the church in Nigeria to weep? It, it, is, it is because the church in Nigeria as a whole is split right down the middle. We have a group that have resources, but have essentially abandoned the core of the faith. We, we have people that lead thousands, sometimes millions of people, but they don't understand what Jesus said, that we should learn to have mercy. We are people that are not concerned about what concerns God, about the situation of their brother. Jesus said, I was hungry, 
and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me water. There are a lot of super pastors, super leaders, super churches that are focused on themselves and disengaged from the reality of, 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 of the community, the larger community. I don't I think Christ came to die for the least and the lost, the least of these ones. That's what the scripture says. He said, whatever you do for the least of these ones, he said, you have done it for me. Now, the church in Nigeria, a lot of time, have no time for the least. They have time for the mighty. They have time for the powerful. They have time for the people that have renown, but no time for the least. I am talking generally. I am not talking about specific instances of people who are leading big churches and yet they are engaged and they are serving the people. But the majority of the leaders of a church are focused on themselves. Dr. Shire, you know, I hear you, but you're standing right there at the headquarters of the largest African Christian denomination in North America, the Redeemed Christian Church of God, and you are the president of the theological school there. Somebody would argue and say, this is one of the largest in Nigeria, uh, denominations in Nigeria, and what have you people in Redeemed done about the situation? What is your denomination doing about the situation? Well, um, I know that there are elements within the Redeemed Christian Church of God that are very engaged in the North. But I will be honest with you, sir, I think we can do better. I like the way you put that. You, you, let me just end by just going to the work you do in Northern Nigeria. Your organization, you head the organization called Mission Africa International, and you are active in the northern part of Nigeria, right in the midst of many of these killings, the, the areas where this is going on. And I know that your organization have been building schools, and you do have schools for children affected by these killings. What is the motivation behind the schools you have started? You, again, the least and the lost, brother, brother Jim. The least and the lost. Uh, I sit here in America, in Texas, in, I, I, and I see the pictures and I just weep. I just weep and weep and weep in my study. And the more I weep, the more I, I, I feel that there, there is a need to do something. There is a need to get involved personally. And at a point in time, I felt God saying to me, you need to stop with weeping and get on the ground. You know, I mean, Brother Chim, I am standing before God and before you. I cried so much about what is happening out there that the Lord finally pushed me out. And we went to this community and we saw about 500 children that have not been in school for four years because of the jihadist wow. proposition. And I'm like, what? Four years of life wasted because the parents are afraid to let them go to a fast school. Nobody wants to come to teach in their community. So I said to my friends, we have to do something. And some of my friends rallied with me, and we went into the midst of this community. Eight of us left America, and we went into the heart of where they were killing people. I, I was there. I saw places where people died. I saw houses that the jihadists pulled down. I saw widows. I saw children that are orphans. As at yesterday, in, my, in the school, we found out that at least half of the children in the school have either lost a father or a mother to the jihadist. That's nearly a hundred children without parents because of violence. And I just felt that we have to do something. And that's the motivation that in the name of Jesus, we are going to do, and by the way, we are not doing it just for the Christian children. In the Fulani community, next to the Christian community, we are building a school there too. 
we are sent. Jesus came to die for the world. Not just for a group of people. We are not trying to form a holy ghetto here. We see in those children the seed of genius. And we will not stand by when we can do something. That's the motivation, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Shayo, for your time. I mean, thank you for the input you've had into the show and the wisdom you've shared. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Thank you for your time. Uh, you know, I think that thing was really... It's I mean, it's, it just hits the nail on the head. I don't um, understand. The least and the last means, that means those who are few and those who don't know Christ, right? The least, the least powerful and the lost, oh, okay. like the, the ones that are outside of the kingdom. Okay. And oh, that, okay. Uh, so that okay. needs to be taken care of. That needs to be like the focus. Yeah, the focus of the church. Oh, and that many times we just feel like we, we do our own thing, do mm -hmm. our big church. And mm -hmm. I mean, Hossi, you remember like at here, see each one, rich one? Yeah, yes, I do, I do, and, I do. And the, the, for me, what really stands out there is just this call to weep. I mean, mm. the fact I was asking myself, mm. do I really weep mm. for this? Do I, mm. does, does this thing really make me weep? Do I go like, I, I read it, I feel bad, but do I really go like, oh God, weeping, like you said, I'm, I, it's a takeaway for me. Mm. That's true. That's quite challenging. Welcome back. Next up, we have a group from Johannesburg called Word to the People. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And uh, we have with us in the studio a worship team from Joburg. It's called the Word of the People. And they're going to perform for us right now the title track of their new album, which is called A New Thing. Take it off, guys.
was quite a good song. I really, really, guys, it made me feel I got to go and get this album. It's available on iTunes, on CD Baby, CD Baby, yes. on where else? Tell me where we can get it. Google Play, uh, Google Play, yeah. all digital, all, platforms. all digital pl platforms, now, basically. Yeah. Now, viewer, you need to get this album, no matter where you are. In it's uh, full of songs like what you've just had. Tell me, where did the vision for this album come from? Well, um, the vision for the album came from God himself, is what we believe. And um, the, basically, the vision is the Great Commission, which is go out into all the nations, making disciples and baptizing everyone in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe, basically, what the Word of God says. And with that, what we, what we believe God has said to us, the mandate that he's given us, is the Word of God through song. So that's why we are called the Word of the People. And um, God has always he put it in my heart to do an album. I was um, at a church, Gateway City Church in Alexandra Township in Johannesburg. Yeah. And God put Alexandra this... Alexandra is the township in Yes, it's, it's the township yeah. in, in Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. And God put this vision on my heart. And um, I shared it with our previous pastor and just with my sisters. And um, one day, I mean, about a couple of months later, maybe even it was a year, I think, um, the new pastor came and he said, hey, why don't we do an album? And at that time, I was like, yes, because it's on my heart. So it's God's vision because God had also put it on his heart. So we merely just grabbed what God was saying. Yeah. So it, wasn't, it didn't come from us. It came from God because he spoke to all, everybody to be aligned with the vision that he was bringing. What's the message you want to pass through this? What, what, what do you want to see happen with this? Well, we just want uh, the world and the people to come together. Um, the thing about what Christ said um, when he said, I will build my church. And, and the undertone of that is unity. And what we want to make sure of is that we as a people are an example of unity. And so we want to come together. We want to work with other churches, um, other communities, uh, individual Christians. We, we just want to not have an excuse to, 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 to not spread this gospel. So our heart at the end of it all, because we're musicians, um, but we're still Christians. So we need to spread the gospel and, and share it with the world. So that's our strategy. So Just, you see yourself going places? We see ourselves going <laughs> anywhere where the Lord <laughs> makes, makes a path, because that's how we even come together. Yeah. I mean, two years ago, some of us didn't even know each other. And here we are, we're sitting, we're sitting and you're singing with sun, we're singing a together. Sink, you are, mm. you, you're like one voice. And <laughs> yes. It really mm. flows. Mm. I enjoy mm. that song. T tell me, where do you go from here? So where we want to go from here is, um, as we were speaking with, we actually asked ourselves this question, and um, what CISA brought up, one of our members, is that we actually we want to be invited into schools. Yeah. We want to be invited into other platforms, invite us to your churches, wherever, so we can share our message. I mean, we've, the song that we've just sung, we got, we have, we've got feedback from people, how they were able to reconnect with God. People that had moved away from God, they were able to reconnect with God again mm -hmm. and say, God, what, what is this calling that you have over my life? Can, let me walk into it. Because we are making disciples. A disciple is a follower of God. Mm -hmm. And to follow God, you have to have his word in your heart because mm -hmm. that's what will get you through the hard mm -hmm. times. That's what will get you through when you think you're not perfect. But God is saying here, I am the faithful one. I will bring you through, even if you're crawling you're gonna make it to that finish line mm. because God is sovereign. So when we speak the words, God says as Christians, we need to speak hymns over each other. And we, as we speak those words over each other in whoever's life, in our lives, I mean, we disciple each other basically. Yeah. And we make sure that we don't leave anyone behind. And we, we, we confess our sins to one another. We, that's what the Bible says. And it's so many times people are so close, they're scared to, to even speak about this. And the beauty of this team is, yes, it may have started off in a church in Alex, but here we've got members from different churches that all came together and we, we came together in the name of Jesus. And you've got these days, I mean, churches have so many different denominations that don't speak to each other for what reason. But this unity that Cesar was speaking about is it's just Jesus. Mm. It's just Jesus, mm. the blood of Jesus mm. that covers us. Thank you, yes. Thank you so much. Word to the people, uh, word of the people yes. for coming on Team Stock <laughs> Africa. And, uh, Thank you so much for performing that beautiful song. We have on the screen 
the details of how you can get this album on all the different platforms. Also, contact the number on the screen if you want to invite this group or go to their website and let them know that you want them to come over to your school, you said, to your church. church. Wherever you want us. Are you ready to go to Ghana? We will go to Ghana. 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 <laughs> Invite Let's us give them a round of come. applause. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you so much for coming Thank on you. the show. The word of the people. God bless you. Welcome back, dear viewers. That was quite a song. Now, before I wrap up this special edition with my children, I want to share a verse of scripture with you, especially as we are now at the very last days of this year, 2018. It's from Gideon's story in Judges 8 verse 4. I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible. It says, Then Gideon and the 300 men who were with him came to the Jordan and crossed over, weary yet pursuing. It is that verse of scripture there that says, that phrase that says, weary yet pursuing, that stands as for me. Gideon and his men came to Jordan, and at the crossing of Jordan, they were very tired. There's a way that uh, coming to the end of the year, some of us are very tired. Some are tired because of all the hard work that has happened. But for some of us, the tiredness and the weariness has come from the fact that in your mind you're going, I can't believe I'm coming to the end of another year, and yet... This prayer I've been praying has not been fulfilled. This promise I've been holding to has not seen manifestation. And crossing the Jordan can, can be like crossing into a new year. I can imagine that Gideon and his men coming to Jordan, it must have kind of increased their weariness. Just the fact of having to wade through that river and cross over. But thank God they didn't stop pursuing. And for some of us too, uh, coming to the end of the year can increase our weariness. It's like I've expected and hoped that this year will be different. This 2018 will be different, but nothing much has happened. Some of you are sitting there with expectations that are yet to be manifested. By the way, the fact that it remains three days or four days more before this year is over doesn't mean that things are over for you. In the next two days before this year is over, there's nothing that stops God from accomplishing what he has promised you for this year. But this is the important thing. When these people got to Jordan and they became weary, thank God they didn't stop. The Bible said they were weary, yet they kept pursuing. And for some of us, we can actually stop pursuing when we get to the crossing of our Jordan, when we get to the crossing into a new year. There's a way some of us lose expectation and we just feel there's no use in pursuing anymore. There's no use in pressing on anymore. I can't go into another year and say this year is going to be my year of this, this, this. 2019 is going to be this and that and then uh, face another dashed hope. And then we lower down our expectations. We cut down that pursuit. It is not proper for a child of God to stop pursuing God, to stop pursuing Christ, to stop pursuing the whole of the promises of God, to give up in holding on in faith in what God has said to him. It is never right to stop pursuing even if we feel weary. And that's why I want to encourage you with this verse of scripture. I find it very encouraging that Gideon and his men did not give up pursuing even though they were weary. And you know, crossing the Jordan has a lot of significance. First of all, crossing the Jordan, remember with Joshua and his men, it, the time they crossed the Jordan was the time they stepped into the promised land. And for Gideon and his men here, it wasn't long after they crossed Jordan that they were able to catch up with their foes and get the victory. Many times it's when we are really at the, at the nick of our victory that the weariness becomes overwhelming and it seems as if we must give up. And I want to just encourage you as we come to the end of this year, don't give up pursuing. Don't give up pursuing as you go into this new year, pursuing Christ-likeness. Don't give up and lower down your standard in pursuing all of becoming like Christ. Don't give up and lower down your standard in pursuing the will of God for your life, the will of God for your family. Don't give up and, and throw in the towel and become weary and stop pursuing into the new year all that God has for you. Don't give up. Instead, like Gideon and his men, you might be weary, but don't stop pursuing. Because the Bible says, and I want to end with this verse of scripture, this beautiful verse of scripture in Psalms. It says that, 
Psalm 34, verse 5. He said, those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. I want you to decide now that you will not go into the new year limping with doubt and a divided heart. I want you to make up your mind that even if I'm tired, even if I go into this new year tired, I want to keep pursuing. I want to keep pursuing God, his purpose, his likeness, and that is the kind of positioning I want you to go into 2019 with. Yeah. That's the word I have to share. This is where we're going to round up for today and round up for the year, incidentally, also. And thank you, my dears, for joining me. Au revoir. Au revoir. I'm Bukashi. Now, I'll see you next week, next year. Thank you so much for joining us every week. Bye bye. Bye. CNN has described her as the star architect. The Guardian newspaper in Nigeria calls her the face of architecture in Nigeria. My guest next week is international award winner and entrepreneur and public speaker Olajumoke Adenowo. And we'll be talking about purpose and how to fulfill your destiny. You are a valuable member of your generation. You have something in you that this generation needs desperately or else you wouldn't be sent in this generation you are an answer to a question that this generation is asking you're a solution to a problem that this generation has next week on Chimstock africa this program is made possible by the generous financial support of believers just like you who share our heart to equip the african church to engage the issues facing our continent your financial support will help us continue this important work if you feel led to give to this ministry, please visit our website today.